Oh, hello, agents, are we on, are we on? Transmission started, excellent. Uh, well, good to see you. Um, no sign of Agent Zachariah, I haven't seen him, he hasn't been, you know, doing his usual video calls, um, but he has been able to get the messages through to us. I uh, hope you saw the messages earlier, um, you know, M sent them through, um, and I've been trying to work these out with you as well. So this is something to do with disciples, and Jesus starting to gather people. Um, and um, I think it's a bit of a wonder why. Why is he gathering people? What is he planning? Is he planning a military coup? Mm. Is he planning a secret takeover? I think it's quite concerning. So we, we need to find out who these disciples are that he's gathering, find out who they are and try and work out what he might be doing. Uh, so I know that we had this through from, um, from Agent Zachariah. Um, and it's been quite difficult. Um, Obviously, to make it code, some of it's been erased. So I've gone over it with my pen. Uh, it's not all completely there, um, but I think I can just about make it out. And then, of course, we've got the um, the double encryption. So I'm going to uh, see what I can see here and see if I can find them in here. Um, and I did that, um, and I, I thought there was one that said, uh, it seems to say Matthew, but I can't really read the A on there. But, um, yeah, I notice in here. There is, um, there is a Matthew, so that's one of them. So um, see if you can work through them all and find them all. I found, I, I did write them down here, then wrote them down when I found the double encryption. Found them on here, found them in here, and I found Peter, Andrew, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, oh, then another James, and actually it's quite clever in here, it says the other James, uh, Thaddeus, Simon and Judas. Okay, so uh, they are the names, so I, I hope you uh, found those too. Now then, I um, uh, just need to find this information as well that uh, Zachariah sent through. Uh, this is uh, exactly what's happening uh, with Jesus and these disciples. Um, and it seems uh, here from here, uh, standing by the lake, people were crowding round, listening to the word of God. So I, I suppose he was a... Um, uh, Jesus was considered a rabbi, he was a teacher, so they would come to hear God's word from him. That wasn't unusual. But there was such a big crowd um, that uh, kind of it was all pushing him back towards the Lake of Galilee and he couldn't quite see everybody and there was just so many. So uh, to make a bit of room, so kind of he was a little bit further back and could see everybody and everyone could see him, um, it appears that he went to the fishermen, uh, one belonging to Simon, um, asked him to go out a little bit so that he could see everybody. Sounds, uh, sounds a very good idea. Then uh, he sat down, taught the people from the boat. So that sounds an excellent idea. Uh, sounds very good. However, uh, we, we have more in here because apparently um, when uh, he'd finished talking, he said to them to put down their nets to get a catch. What had happened previously is the reason the fishermen were on the shore is because they were cleaning their nets because they'd been out all night, which is the time when they would fish, and they hadn't caught anything. So here's this Jesus, whoever he thinks he is, coming along in the daytime, making them put their boats out. Okay, fine, they were very kind, did that. And then suddenly says, right, put your nets down, get some fish. And they're kind of going, but now's not the time to get fish. We've done that, we were out all night, we didn't catch any. But you know, it appears there was something special about Jesus because Simon answers here and said, Master, we've worked all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. So there must have been something, perhaps some authority that Jesus carried or something that he'd picked up but different about him that made him decide he was gonna to listen to him. He said, when they're done, they caught such a number of fish, their nets began to break. They signalled the other boats uh, to come and help and they came and filled both boats so full they began to sink. And do you know what I found? I found this amazing painting, look at this here. And this is the story of it says the miraculous catch of fish, because that's what it was really, wasn't it? It was, it was a miracle. They hadn't caught any, the fish don't bite in the day, um, and yet when Jesus comes along to the fishermen, there are so many fish um, that it fills up both of the boats. And I love this picture, there's something a little bit undercover about this picture, isn't there? That the whole thing is almost done in these fishy shapes. And the net of fish kind of becomes the disciples, and 
flows from Jesus. Something quite amazing about that, I think. Beautiful, beautiful picture. So that, that is what happened. So I wonder, I wonder how I would have responded to that. Let me go back to this again, back to this, because it tells us about Simon. And it said that Simon, or Simon Peter as he calls him here, Simon saw this, he fell at Jesus' feet and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. Because they were all astonished at the fish they had taken. It was amazing, wasn't it? And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. So we've got Simon, James and John here. And then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. Because I guess they were wondering how we'd managed to do this. How we'd managed to suddenly, there were so many fish, it was overflowing. So he said, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Don't know about you, think that sounds a bit weird. I'm not quite sure what that means. Hopefully we'll find out a bit more in the, um, in the coming weeks as we see a bit more about what Jesus is doing. Um... So they pulled their boats on the shore, left everything, and followed him. And that's the bit that struck me. When we're looking at these truths, and we're looking at these, uh, these historical things that happened, and we're trying to work out uh, who is this Jesus, that's the bit that struck me the most. They left everything and followed Jesus. They were fishermen. That's where they got their money from. But they left everything, they left their fishing and followed Jesus. And I think the word that caught me was, they were astonished. So who is this Jesus? That Simon and James and John saw him and were so astonished, so amazed, that it meant they would leave everything and follow Jesus. I don't know about you. But if that's who Jesus is, then I want to know. I want to be astonished by him. Somebody that's worth leaving everything, everything to follow. Doesn't say he said he was going to start a military coup and they were going to go and fight. It says they were going to fish for men. I don't know, I have to find out a bit more about that. But I think I want to be astonished by Jesus. I'm remembering what we talked about, about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit helping us kind of understand and understand God's word. So I'm going to pray now and I'm going to ask that over these next few weeks as we find out and see what Jesus was doing and find out what his plan was and who he really is, that we would be astonished, that we would be amazed like James and John. If he really is this amazing, that we would see it, that the Holy Spirit would reveal it to our hearts and that we would follow him too so maybe you want to join me father god we're just amazed at this story how they went from no fish to just a miraculous catch of fish that wasn't normal that wasn't possible and peter and james and john saw something amazing in jesus Father God, would you send your Holy Spirit so that we could see something amazing in Jesus. We could see who he really is that you'd reveal to us over these next few weeks. Who is this Jesus? And what does that mean for me? Why did they give up everything, everything, and go and follow him? Holy Spirit, would you come and reveal that to me? Amen. Hmm, I don't know, made me feel quite autistic. Maybe you fancy getting your pen and your paper or your paints out and um, drawing a picture using these fish shapes. Um, maybe as you do that, you could use that as a way of praying, um, asking God to show you. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe you could just do that as a way of expressing um, something about that story. Hmm. I might, might get mine out and have a go. I'm not a brilliant artist, but I love this idea of these fish shapes all coming together to, um, to show that picture that it all came from Jesus and it influenced Peter and James and John. So uh, 
Okay, I'm going to do that now, I think. Um, so I shall see you shortly uh, with my uh, with my paintbrushes and whatever I can find. Um, and um, yeah, uh, yeah, happy hunting with your clues. Yeah, bye now. So I've drawn a bit of a picture using kind of fishy shapes. It took me a little while to get into it. Um, and then I've just done a boat here and uh, one of the fishermen there. Um, and you could use fat tip pens, you could use pencil crayons, paints, whatever you've got. Uh, I'm just going to have a go with some watercolours and, uh, and, and have a go. And as I do, I'm going to reflect on um, this amazing miracle that Jesus did. So I've started to do the fishies in reds and browns and yellows just to make them stand out a bit differently from the sea. And then the sea I'm doing in these sort of blues and green colours. <laughs> Quite like the idea that it's kind of okay to be a little bit messy because they're all jumbled in together. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be too careful. I think I probably need to add a few more fish because it does say there was an astonishing amount of fish in the net. I don't think I've quite got enough. It's all really wet because it is the sea. Being careful I don't go on the table. Using the paper underneath so I don't get it all over my table. Do shade of green for the fisherman, just to link him with the, the bluey green of the sea, and that's what they do. There you go. There's my painting. I've really enjoyed that and reflecting on the story and reflecting on how the disciples were astonished at what Jesus did.